Welcome to History from 3. So we continue with the topic missionary factor in Central Africa and basically now we are continuing with the planter mission having looked at the uh, uh, the UMCA and other Scottish missionaries. Now let us look at the planter mission the plant dimension. So on this part, on this period, we're going to look at a number of issues, how the plant dimension came to mind, where they settled, and uh, what were some other uh, things that happened, what did they bring, and the impact they brought within uh, this territory. So we are going to look at the plant dimension. It is a good part, let's be together. So, Apart from the UMCA, apart from uh, uh, the Anglican, we have looked at uh, the Livingstonia mission. So here, let's look at the Blantyre, the Blantyre mission. So the mission was sent by the established Church of Scotland, that is the Blantyre mission. So it was led by Henry Henderson. So Henry Henderson was the leader of the Blantyre uh, mission. So it was officially established at Chief Capeni, uh, that is in Blanta, uh, there in, or on 23rd October 1876. So the mission was called Blanta Mission in honor of Livingstone's home, hometown in Scotland. Remember, we said Livingstone was born in Scotland at a, a village town which was called um, Blanta. So Chief Captain of Mangochiao, Mangochiao, remember the uh, the the work uh, of how the the Mangochiao, they were the Machingayao, uh, the Mangochiao, they settled in the Shire Highlands. You should remember that. So Ch Chief Captain was the, the uh, leader of the Yao. So he gave land to the missionaries because he saw that uh, they had a potential. They were a potential shield against the attacks by the Maseko, Ngoni, and the Machinga Yao, and the Kololo from the Lower Shire. So remember, this Mangochi Yao, first they settled in Mangochi. By the coming of the Machinga Yao, they were displaced and they went to uh, the Shire Highlands. So it meant that the coming of the missionaries, they accepted them as a shield against any attack from outside. So why did the Blanta missionaries choose Kapeni area as a site for their mission? So number one was that because it was the slave trade route. So the slave traders were passing through this area. And number two, the area had cool climate. It was good for settlement as well. We talk of the Shire Highlands. And the area had fertile soils for tropical plants. For example, tea and coffee, they were doing so good in uh, in the Shire Highlands. So the place was just good uh, for uh, tropical plants. And also the area was accessible to the Zambezi through the Shire River. So they were able to connect to the Zambezi River, then the Indian Ocean through uh, the Shire River. It was near uh, the Shire River, then which was is connecting to uh, the Zambezi. Now, what were the problems? What were the problems that they faced or which they faced, these people faced at the uh, Kapeni village there? Number one was the scarcity of money. It meant that uh, these people, they were in the remote, very remote, remote area where uh, maybe social services, they were uh, to provide for themselves. So uh, they could not use money. They could not find money as such. Uh, it was in a very remote area and tribal tribal wars tribal wars uh we see to it that the kololo they kept on disturbing uh, the area and other yao groups they were also uh, disturbing the area and also shortage of food supply and the missionaries were busy uh, looking for food other than uh, preaching to the people so 
because of that shortage of food supply, the missionaries got busy uh, to look for food. And also the malaria attacks, they were also attacked by the malaria. And the Ngoni raids, uh, they were also disturbing, that is the Maseko Ngoni. And we talk also of slave trade activities uh, also hindered the uh, missionary work in that area. And also another problem of the Blanta mission uh, was that they were involved in matters, in local matters, and that one, it damaged the image or the reputation of the Blanta mission. So for example, uh, number one, harsh, they were harsh to the local people. They were so harsh to the local people. And also they were acting as chiefs in judging cases and imprisoning and punishing uh, the culprits. So they were also there as chiefs, not as the, the church people. So they were also uh, judging the case, cases, condemning others to, uh, to prison or punishment, and also acting as traditional authority, thereby undermining the established local authority. So Chief Kapeni had less authority than the Blantyre, uh, the Blantyre mission. And also executing the couplets, for example, they ordered the hanging of two African offenders in 1879. So uh, they condemned uh, the couplets to death. So that one, it was not the work of the missionaries. So it was like they went beyond uh, their boundaries. So their involvement in local uh, issues or local matters, it damaged their uh, it, uh, reputation. However, they had some achievements. Uh, they had some achievements in that area. Number one was that they trained Africans in many skills like building, carpentry, uh, typing. They uh, trained Africans in that. And evangelism, on the other hand, also uh, they tried to do that, to evangelize, to preach the gospel. And also they achieved uh, the, uh, something by offering uh, medical work. They offered medical work through uh, treating illness using the, uh, the Western medicine. And also they wrote a Nyanja dictionary. They wrote a Nyanja dictionary, that is the Blanta missionaries. And also they opened schools. Uh, so opened schools were renowned, uh, 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 they opened schools where renowned Malawians uh, such as John Chirembwe and James Sangara, they got their education uh, from there. And also they offered employment to Africans. They offered employment to Africans and also constructed uh, the Blanta Mission Church there, which is now uh, the St. Michael's uh, and All Angels, uh, St. Michael's and All Angels by uh, Clement Scott. Clement Scott, he did that. So the mission had other stations like Zomba, uh, Zomba in 1878, Domasi 1884, and Mulanje in 1889. So those are some of the achievements. We can see that they did not just settle in the area of Chief Kapen. They managed to uh, diversify, to uh, expand their territory or their work into other areas. So we talk of Zomba, Domasi, as well as Mulanje. They expanded the missionary work. So let's look at the other one, and this is the Dutch, the Dutch Reformed Church, the Dutch Reformed Church. That is, uh, it came in 1889. So the Dutch Reformed Church Mission, abbreviated to DRCM, was sponsored or was formed and sponsored by the Dutch, uh, the Dutch or the Boers. Uh, from uh, South Africa, from South Africa. So Reverend Charles or Andrew Charles Murray was sent to Malawi and arrived in 1888. So he, he was later joined by William Murray, William Murray, his brother. So he was charged with duty of locating the suitable site where they could uh, establish the mission station. So for some time, he lived with the Dr. Laws of the Livingstonia Mission at Bandawe. So they were there uh, with Laws while they were searching for the place where they could do, uh, establish their mission station. So their aim was to establish a mission station among the Ngonde. 
among the Ngonde. So in 1889, Reverend Andrew Charles Murray, together with the new arrival, uh, then uh, they surveyed the central region of uh, uh, the central region for a suitable site for the mission station. So uh, William Murray and his friend then they moved uh, from Bandawe and uh, they went to survey the central region for a suitable site. So why why did the DRC missionaries uh, locate or uh, why were they allowed by Chiwere Tovu, that is in the central region? So number one was that the missionaries or the white missionaries would be the source of prestige by or to the chief. So uh, Chief Chiwere allow, allowed uh, the Dutch missionaries to be in their society so that they also have the prestige to say, all right, we also have the white people in our uh, area. And also the Ngoni hoped that the Mare possessed supernatural powers, especially after Emsley had successfully prayed for the rains at Mberwa's uh, request. So uh, the miracle that, uh, that uh, Dr. Emsley did, it spread far and wide. So even the Ngoni of Chiwere and Rovu, they were also looking for those people who had, who had that power. So they believed that the whites, they possessed some supernatural powers that could assist them, just as they assisted the Ngoni in the, uh, in the Mberwa area. So they established the Mvera mission. So this one, it was in 1889. So the DRCM, Dash Reformed Church Mission, it opened its first mission at Mvera, at Mvera, uh, which is a site 40 kilometers from Salima Boma, near uh, the headquarters of Chiwere, Chiwere and Trovo, in November 1889. That's when they established their mission station at Mver. So it was from there that the mission work spread uh, the whole of central region. So from Mvera, they now embarked on spreading the missionary work the whole of central region. So in 1890, an African teacher called Tomani, he opened the first school at Mvera. So the first school was opened by the African uh, teacher there. So he was a product of the Livingstonia mission. So this Tomani, he, was, uh, he studied at Livingstonia uh, mission. So you can see to it that people were coming from all the way from the central region to come to Kondowe to learn. Uh, the skills. So it has to be uh, noted that this uh, signified the uh, the relationship which existed between the DRCM and the, the Livingstonia mission. Just as we have said that when Charles Murray uh, he arrived here, he was welcomed by uh, Robert Laws at Bandau. And from there, that's when he started off to search for uh, the places where he could settle and uh, establish his mission station. Now, let's look at the problems, problems that were faced uh, or that were experienced at Vera. Vera mission also had some problems. So what were these problems? So number one was the con persistent uh, Ngoni attacks. So the Ngoni, they continually uh, attacked uh, the people to whom uh, they were uh, spreading that gospel or the mission had an impact on. So the Ngoni were frequently attacking those people. And again, uh, Marelia, uh, Marelia uh, the black water fever and the, the wild animals were a, a constant threat. So Marelia, uh, black water fever, and wild animals, they were the threats. So the black water fever means that maybe unsafe water uh, that they were drinking. So it was uh, also a threat. And the wild animals, the lions, uh, the leopards, and many others. And the third threat or problem was the, the DRC uh, had strained relations with the colonial government. So the DRC, much as you know that they were the Dutch, they were not the British, 
and uh, by the time they were coming it was that uh, the British had already uh, announced that uh, Nyasaland is a protectorate of uh, the British. So the Dutch, they were not in good relation with the, the colonial, the British colonial government. So there was a strained relationship, uh, number one, due to the outbreak of the Anglo-Boa War. Uh, Anglo-Boa War, that was 1899 to 1902. That is, the Anglo-Boa War was fought in South Africa there. So then, uh, they were competing between the British as well as uh, the Dutch. So, uh, the same. Dutch and the British were supposed to work together in Nyasaland, the others as the, the colonial masters, the others as, the, uh, as the, the missionaries, hence they did not, they were not in good terms. And also the introduction, introduction of the hard tax uh, that was introduced in 1892. So this one, the mission, the DRCM, it objected that uh, hard tax. But however, the mission continued despite there were those problems. So the mission continued to operate in Malawi. So let's look at the other one. The other one uh, was the Nkoma mission, again by the DRCM. So it was established in 1896. So the problems with the DRCM, or which the DRCM experienced at Mvera, it made them uh, to readily accept an invitation from the Chewa chief. So the Chewa chief Mazengera invited uh, them or the missionaries to settle in their area after they experienced the problems uh, at Mvera. So Mvera was therefore abandoned and the, a new mission station was opened uh, on the eastern slopes of the Nkoma, of the Nkoma mountain. So they went to the area of chief uh, Mazengera in Nkoma. So later Nkoma became its headquarters in 1924. So in 1924, that's when uh, the Nkoma mission became the headquarters of the DRCM. So other mission stations uh, from Nkoma, they were also opened. So there were a number of missions that were opened operating from Nkoma. Number one was the Mlanda, which was opened in 1902. And the other one was Mkunzi. Mkunzi was also opened in 1903 uh, and Malingunde and Marembo. Uh, they were also opened in 1907. Uh, the other one was Shintembe and Mchinji in 1914. So we see from Koma, uh, Koma uh, Station or Mission Station, they opened a lot of uh, mission stations in Salima, in Mangochi, in Mchinji, in the same district, Lilongwe. So there were a lot of uh, mission stations that they opened uh, from the headquarters in Goma. So let's look at the achievement. What did this Dutch Reformed Church mission uh, achieved in Malawi? Number one, it imparted the industrial skills on Africans, such as farming, basket weaving, and again carpentry. In the mission stations, they were opening schools, and uh, they were also offering the technical skills, such as uh, these ones, basket weaving, farming, and many others. Also, education through the Western schools. So they were operating the Western schools, the schools that were following uh, the British curriculum. And also, uh, they were evangelizing, so they also uh, achieved in evangelism because many people came to know Christianity. Now, let's look at the formation of uh, the CCP because we have looked at the Livingstonia, the Blantyre, and the, the Nkoma. Uh, today, we have the Nkoma Synod, Blantyre Synod, Livingstonia Synod of the CCP. They are all called the CCP. How did that CCP uh, come into existence? So, the CCP stands for the Church of Central Africa Presbyterian, that is CCAP. Now it was formed in 1924. So the CCP as uh, a Church of Central Africa Presbyterian, it was formed in 1924. Earlier on, they were all independent. There was Blantyre, there was Nkoma, there was Livingstonia. They were independent churches, just as we have known them. They came at different times, they uh, settled at different areas, and they did not have the same leader. But they, at a certain point in time, they were united. So that's what we're talking about. So 
uh, it was Dr. Laws, uh, Dr. Uh, Laws, Robert Laws of the Livingstonia. Yeah, so it was formed by him in 1924 uh, after he had uh, he had united uh, the two. He had brought the two Scottish missions, uh, that is the Bryant Dyer Mission uh, and Livingstonia Mission. He united them to the Dutch Reformed Church and they reached the common doctrinal understanding and the, uh, these ones are uh, the three they formed uh, the three synods uh, then they were formed so these three synods were Blantyre Synod, uh, Coma Synod and the, the Livingstonia Synod so the three synods were formed in 1924 after Dr. Laws uh, came together with the, uh, uh, the federal Scottish missions that is it the Blantyre mission, then that is he joined the Blantyre and the Livingstonia mission, then uh, they came together uh, to reason together with the DRCM. So they settled their doctrines together to say what are, what are we teaching? Then they said oh we are teaching the same, therefore let's form uh, the one church and they formed the CCAP in 1924. So uh, Blantyre Synod, Coma Synod, Livingstonia Synod, they form what is now called the CCP. Now, having looked at the uh, Blantyre Mission uh, and the DRCM, the Dash Reformed Church Mission, uh, those two, now uh, we, are, we are going to stop here uh, for now. And we have seen how these two missions uh, entered Malawi, where they settled and the, uh, the impact they uh, brought in and some of the challenges which they faced wherever they settled. But next time as we continue, we're going to look at the Roman Catholic missions, the Roman Catholic mission in Malawi. So we're going to see again how the Roman Catholic priest or missionaries came to Malawi and what they did wherever they settled and the impact they had. So it will be another good part that we are going to look at. So until that time, thank you so much. Ndienga tisimupuzira, sikuru wakuikirani haba, mukala, otumidwa.